Today's video is about a miraculous healing that proves how Padre Pio's presence transcends time and space. Stay tuned to hear the story. Welcome back to our YouTube channel following Padre Pio. If you're new to our channel, Padre Pio was a Capuchin friar, mystic, and miracle worker whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos and shorts five days a week, so follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member, or a friend. And now to our story. The story I'm about to share is taken from the book Padre Pio Crucified by Love by Silvana Cobucci Leite. Interesting choice of title, emphasizing Padre Pio's self-sacrificing love. In this book, Silvana recounts a testimony given by Attilio Mazzoni, an engineer residing in a city near Verona in northern Italy. Attilio and his family had a profound connection with Padre Pio, whom they had the privilege of meeting in 1962. It's worth mentioning that one of his daughters had the honor of receiving her first communion from Padre Pio himself. Now that shows some serious devotion, considering they had to travel around 690 kilometers or about 430 miles to see Padre Pio. Now let's dive into the story. Back in February 1978, when Attilio was 49 years old, he underwent x-rays that revealed a devastating diagnosis a tumor in his left lung. Further tests confirmed the severity of the situation, with doctors fearing that the disease had already spread. They suggested surgery as a last attempt to save him. Upon learning of the gravity of the situation, Attilio's family braced themselves for the worst. They must have been devastated. But despite the seriousness of his condition, Attilio remained positive. After the doctor left, he said to his family, Did you smell that perfume? It's Padre Pio's perfume, and I'm certain that he is by my side. Everything will be fine. Interestingly, no one else could smell the intense scent of flowers mentioned by Attilio. But his family didn't want to disappoint him, so they stayed quiet. The very next day, Attilio went through with the surgery. But sadly, the doctor's fears were confirmed. The disease had indeed spread. They delivered the heartbreaking news to Attilio's wife, Maria Rosa, informing her that her husband had only a few months to live. Wanting to protect her husband from this painful truth, Maria Rosa decided not to share the doctor's prediction. After spending 15 long days in the hospital, Attilio and Maria Rosa finally returned home. However, Attilio's condition worsened day by day, during that period, Maria Rosa recounts, My husband was mostly confined to bed, and since he had lost his voice, we placed a bell next to his bed so he could call us if he needed anything. Four long months passed, and Attilio showed no signs of improvement. But then something extraordinary happened one Saturday morning. Maria Rosa, who was busy taking care of the house, instead of hearing the sound of the bell, heard Attilio's strong voice calling out to her from the bedroom. She rushed in and found Attilio sitting up in bed with joy in his eyes. His face had regained its normal color. Deeply moved, she listened as Attilio explained that it was Saturday, a day dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary, who through the intervention of Padre Pio had granted him this extraordinary grace. In just a matter of days, Attilio made a full recovery he regained his strength, resumed his daily activities, and went on to live another 15 years. End of testimony. Isn't it fascinating to hear about Mr. Attilio's incredible recovery when he was on the verge of death? Imagine, he couldn't even speak at the time. But just when all hope seemed lost, he experienced a miraculous turnaround. It truly demonstrates the powerful intercession of Padre Pio and the loving intervention of our mother Mary. Now, I don't know if you caught it or not, but these events actually took place in 1978, long after Padre Pio passed away. It goes to show that Padre Pio's influence continues even after his death. As he himself often said, 
After my death, I will do more. My real mission will begin after my death. This is why I strongly encourage you to become a protective child of Padre Pio, for two very special reasons. First, you become a Padre Pio apostle, thus helping us to reach out to more and more people who need to hear these stories of Padre Pio for their spiritual benefit. Without the continued support of our protected child of Padre Pio members, this vital apostolate would die. Second, by doing so, you personally will receive great spiritual benefits. For example, your intentions will be included in holy masses celebrated monthly. So help us to spread Padre Pio far and wide by clicking in the link in the description below. Thank you for listening. Please give our channel a boost by continuing to watch another video. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. I have recommended some videos especially chosen for you on the end screen. Or just click on one of the links in the description below for a full selection of great Padre Pio stories or our playlist Padre Pio Thoughts for the Day. And don't forget to enroll your Mass Intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Foley Mass. You'll find the link in the description below. And stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.